I've got here a Canon XHA1 video camera. It's in uh, pieces at the moment. Um, I'm going to do a demonstration video of this on, on YouTube because uh, I've got several view. I've done several demos and teardowns and repairs of camcorders, and uh, several people are interested in those. Um, I've not done one of this uh, XHA1, although there are several. Uh, videos on my YouTube channel that, that were shot with this and it is a very good camcorder despite it being a good 14 years old now and using the outdated HDV format it, it is a very good camera but HDV is a bit of an unreliable format it uses mini DV tapes um, but a small dropout in the tape means that uh, you lose about two seconds of video whereas in standard definition DV you would only get a slight glitch in the frame. Anyway, I ended up replacing the, the entire cassette deck in this camera. Um, the original one had a mechanical fault. Um, I think I can probably fix it, but this is out of another out of another camera. But it's still not perfect. I get uh, some tape dropouts. Um, in fact, I've got here a TDK tape. This camera will just not record onto these TDK tapes at all at least not in high definition. It's drop out after drop out after drop out after drop out after drop out. It's completely unusable. Um, I've got some, some others. Here's uh, Panasonic professional ones. These are these are fine. Uh, I've got some JVC ones and some standard, standard Panasonic ones. They're fine. Um, however, it's still not perfectly reliable even with the good, good quality tapes. Um, you may well find you'll you'll record for an hour, and you'll get two or three dropouts in that whole. Time on DV, you'll get a, f a few dropouts, although it's still not um, it's not as noticeable on DV. And if you want an example of what it looks like uh, playing uh, an HDV tape uh, with this fault, uh, this is one of the dodgy TDK tapes. Uh, I've got a recording on this uh, made on this particular camera here. Uh, I'll just play that back and you'll see uh, that you get a lot of dropouts. Uh, this little segment is okay. Oh, there's one. But you'll lose a couple of seconds at a time. There it goes again. To play a little bit and you'll lose each dropout, you'll lose two or three seconds at a time. There we go. And again. There's another one, and another, and another. So that, that's completely unusable. Um, this Sony camcorder uh, is actually quite reliable. You, even this will record onto these TDK tapes. Uh, you will get some... You will get... I, I do get more dropouts on these TDK tapes on the Sony than I do on the higher quality Panasonic ones. But even the Sony will record a, a reasonably good recording onto them. Uh, heads are nice and clean, but what I do really want to check is the tape alignment. And um, these two guides here and here uh, are used to set the alignment. But it's quite difficult to check properly, and I also want to see if the head is in good condition. Um, and I really need to get the oscilloscope out on it and uh, it's a bit tricky to do that because it's this cable here that connects the head chips see I've got this board somewhat loose and this is why these sorts of things can be an absolute pain in the backside to service and repair you can see all these ribbon cables which connect though when you Plugging and unplugging those, they're very prone to getting dirty and you'll put it back together and it won't work. There's these two here which are really fiddly. Um, they are for the um, lens uh, iris and uh, zoom and focus uh, knobs. Uh, sometimes you plug those in, these rings don't work so you have to clean those. They can be a bit of a pain. Anyway, but I don't have the service manual for this, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to connect where. I do have the XL H1 service manual, which is a very similar camera to this, but it's an XL camera, so it's, it's different. I mean, it's similar electronics-wise, but very different form factor, so it will be a bit different. 
But this is where the heads connect. You can tell because it's got the shielding on the cable. And that goes into this little connector here. And you can tell this will be where the head amplifier is because it's got the uh, shielding on there. So somewhere around there will probably be a test point for, for where we would connect our oscilloscope to look at the RF output. And if the RF output is too low, that means the uh, heads might be a bit worn out. Or if the RF is, is nice, uh, then they're probably not worn out. Um, likewise, I can put a known good tape in and I can use that RF signal on the oscilloscope to check the alignment. But how do you get, how are you supposed to connect anything? You know, you, you, you're you supposed to measure this with, with the tape in and, and playing, but where are you supposed, where, where do you connect your oscilloscope to? I think the, um, the connector is on this side of the board, but I think the, um, but I think the uh, amplifier chip will be on this side because the, the, the shielding can is on both sides and there's no room for a chip in there. Um, so I think that will be on this side underneath the cassette deck. Um, of course there will probably be an actual test point on the PCB somewhere. I know on the uh, XLH1 they do like to give these model numbers a bit of a mouthful. Uh, it is actually brought out to a connector that you can plug into. But I can't find a service manual for this anywhere. So, although there are a couple of unused connectors, like there's one all, all the way over here, there's not this one here that's not used. I, I don't know what what goes where, and I, I can if you want to take the tape drive out, you have to remove this board and then take the tape drive off the frame and really to get all this off properly you have to then take this side panel off and take the battery out and you have to take the whole thing to bits and it's a real pain in the backside to disassemble and put back together especially with all these bloody ribbon cables now I don't know whether to just have a little poke around in this connector with the oscilloscope and see if, if that see if the uh, RF signal is brought out on there anywhere it might be because it's th this is actually quite there is actually quite a good aspect to this camera design. On on the side panel, which is this one here, it actually has these two holes. And they're for like, adjusting the alignment of the tape deck. So you can actually ad adjust the alignment of the tape deck um, while the camcorder is put together. You don't have to take it apart this far. But the correct way to align it is to use an oscilloscope. So if they've put those holes there you'd think there'd be a connector easily accessible on the bottom which you can use and that's the only one there so I might just put it back together and um, play a tape and see if there is an RF signal from the tape head on there somewhere there may be there may not be but we'll see well that connector there which is labeled 2901 which I thought might have been it um, doesn't appear to have any playback RF on it it does have a video signal on it though, which you can't really see on the screen, but um, trust me, that's a video signal. <coughs> Various other things, which I can't determine what they are. But the um, XLH1, uh, it's a, a connector called 2900. Now, there is actually a pad on here called 2900, just behind there. But it's not a, a connector, it's just pads. Now, that would be okay to probe with a, an oscilloscope probe, especially one of these... Uh, nice sharp ones, but I, you can't get in there to probe it. Now it turns out what you're supposed to do with the XLH one is to connect a jig to it and that will bring bring the, the, the connect out so that you can probe it properly. Of course I don't have one of those. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think I can really get up there with anything, so Unless I can get creative, I think uh, I'll just have to leave it. Yeah, I've had a prod at uh, that connector that is populated, is populated. Nothing on there, or at least not on the top, that looks like playback RF. And then uh, down, down there, you can just about see on the camera screen, there's um, an unpopulated connector. 
I thought that might have it on there, but it doesn't. And there's a few assorted pads lurking around. Uh, I didn't manage to probe them all with my um, oscilloscope probe. Um, had to get some of them with uh, a clip and a piece of wire. But uh, so I could be missing it by accident somehow, or it might just not be there. I might be looking completely in the wrong place. Um, and you you would expect there to be a test point down here near where the tape drive is. Um, yeah, but there's obviously no room to get anything anything in there, so not really sure what to do other than just leave it. I don't know really how good this tape drive is, to be honest. I could possibly get another tape drive and put that in and see if it's any different and hopefully get one that's not as, as well used as this, because it's quite possible that this is well used, but I, I'm suspecting it's probably not. So, yeah, I don't know. I think I'll just have to leave it and just use the high quality tapes and, and hope that I don't get too many dropouts on it. Uh, one thing I will just point out is this pinch roller here. Uh, when I got the camera and when I got this uh, replacement mechanism, uh, the pinch roller on both of them, the uh, little white clip that you can see there, had uh, cracked. Um, it was still just about serviceable, it wasn't falling off, but um, I managed to replace it with a piece of ballpoint pen tube. Uh, cut a little piece down to size. It took me quite a long time to find a, a ballpoint pen that uh, uh, was actually the right thickness. But uh, I, I did eventually, and I cut a piece off and uh, put it on there, and it's uh, held in nice and securely now. <laughs>